What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Danson of brendansadventures.com and on this episode I'm in Florence, Italy and I'm going to walk you through how to get the most out of your travel photography in a limited time in a certain destination. Let's do it. So a little while ago when I published my video from Helsinki, Finland, I had a viewer ask me, how do you get the most out of your photography in a destination that you've never been to before when you only have two or three days to photograph it? Back when I was in Helsinki, I'd never been there before. And now here in Florence, Italy, I've never been here before. And yes, it can be tricky photographing a city you've never been to before in limited amounts of time. So I thought the viewer raised a pretty good question and I thought I would put together a video from here in Florence that talks about what goes into making the most of my travel photography in a destination like this that I've never been to before. I just have two days, two full days here in Florence and I thought I would put together a video. So this is it. Essentially, when it comes down to getting the most out of your photography in any destination, let alone one you've never been to before, it comes down to research first, then planning, and then finally execution. So I'm gonna walk you through Florence, Italy, and my process, my, my creative process here in Florence, Italy, following those three steps. So step number one is research, and research is so important. So let's jump onto my computer and I'll show you my process for the research. So here we have a map of Florence, Italy. It's a city I'd never been to before, I've never been to before, so to me, it's just an empty map, um, but I can figure out some things just looking at it. So I can see the riverfront. I love images that have water and riverfronts in them. Um, it's just a thing I love. I love the flowing water. I love having the openness that a river gives you to shoot things along, you know, along the waterfront. I can see this is the cathedral, um, the famous cathedral here in Florence. This is called Duomo. I can tell that's there. I can tell that this is the other iconic thing, the bridge, and then some other spots, so some, some other spots around the city here. And the cool thing about Google Maps nowadays, if you've never seen a place before, you can just hover over it and you can see what it looks like more or less. So I can go like that and I can see that that's what the Plaza of the Republic looks like. That's, well, that's not the photo of the church, but you, you get the idea. And, and stuff like that. So you can really just hover and go, oh, that's cool, I wanna photograph that. But before I even do this, I want to see what's available to shoot in a city. So usually I just go straight to Google Images and I type in Florence, Italy. Then I can get some ideas on certain locations to shoot. For example, I can see that this is the Duomo, the famous iconic building, and this must be photographed. For really iconic images of the city, there, there has to be a way that this is involved in a lot of the imagery. So I can see this is probably shot from some rooftop. This is an image angle I like. I'm guessing this is shot from an elevated building top or a plaza or something like that. Um, there's lots of images from high, so maybe there's an opening, maybe there's an open park. In fact, here I can see trees in the foreground, so I'm guessing there's some elevated park here. Uh, that's an angle I love as well down the river here. And so essentially, if I'm buzzing through the Google images really quick, I can see that those are the two iconic shots one from above and one of the riverfront. That's probably the most important thing to shoot. And then this bridge, which I've seen a couple times before as well, which I mentioned on the maps was probably this one. You hover over it, you can guess it probably is. Um, that's a cool image too, something a little bit different. Um, but essentially going through these images, I can tell that those are the iconic shots. Those are the shots that most photographers are aiming to get when they come to Florence. Another place I like to go for research on images is 500px. The images tend to be a little bit higher quality here than you get on Google image searches. So I can see again that elevated shot of the river here, the Duomo from up close, from above. Again, that elevated shot, there has to be a park or a rooftop there available. That's a really cool angle, that panoramic, I love that. And so yeah, basically I've got an idea of what I would like to shoot and the locations I'd like to shoot the most. And once I've done some image searching, I just go straight into Google and I Google search best, place, best places to photograph in Florence 
or best places to photograph in Helsinki. And not every destination will give you results, but most of the most popular places do give you good results. The first result, number one result on Google was a website called thewanderinglens.com and it's essentially a guide to photography locations in Florence, Italy, which is absolutely perfect. And in fact, that's what this video in part is going to be as well. Um, so if you go through here quick, you see there's a map of all the different locations that he includes later on in the list. And then he's got the river, the riverfront, which looks beautiful, gives you some, you know, some ideas on places to shoot or images to shoot. Then location number two is the Duomo, the famous roof uh, cathedral shot directly in the cathedral or from the top of the cathedral. And that gives you these cool perspectives of the rooftops. That's something I would really like to shoot. That's a cool angle as well from the top here. I'd like to probably put something, my own twist to something like this, I, but that's an angle I really like. And just the classic images of the rooftops. I'm guessing that's not taken from the Duomo itself. I'm guessing that those images are taken from up here and this must be another building right near it. So um, despite what the article says, and again, more rooftops. I think that's cool and the light looks cool as well. I'm guessing this would be a great place to shoot around sunset. Um, next place is Piazza Michelangelo, Michelangelo Plaza. And that's the elevated place. So if we go then to Google Maps, Michelangelo Plaza is right here. So it looks like you can walk up to there. And that gives you that elevated look. I'm guessing with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I could pick up the skyline as well, or just the rooftops, I mean. And yeah, that's that classic image from the top. So that's very cool that I can shoot that from up there. Next location is another plaza. I can skim through these images quick and um, maybe not somewhere I'd, I'd need to photograph, but could be an extra location. Um, the bridges. So this gives you that classic view of the famous bridge here. And then he's got another location, which is a market. Um, it looks like an antiques market from previous research. It might be something that's cool to shoot for kind of street photography in the middle of the day if I have, if I have extra time on my hands. So based on, on looking at that information from my research, I can tell that there's two places I need to photograph, actually three places I need to photograph. One is the riverfront, two is the plaza, and three is the top of the Duomo Cathedral. Those are the three places I need to photograph. I'd like to probably photograph from the, from the plaza twice, from way up top twice, just to get sunrise and sunset and maybe different types of light. So then I have a third morning and I have an extra day to shoot something different. Now I'm here at the Plus Hostel in Florence and they've got this terrace above the city that looks really cool. And I think I might be able to get a really nice angle of the Duomo in the background from that rooftop terrace as long as I can get up there at sunrise. So we'll see if I can. They have 24 hour reception here, so I'm sure that they'll let me up there to shoot sunrise. So there I've got five locations. That's my time here in Florence. Now it's all about planning them. So again, let's jump back to my computer and I'll show you how I go about planning um, what I want to shoot at what hours and, and what not. So this is an app called the Photographer's Ephemeris. And what the Ephemeris is, is it's basically a guide to a city. This is Florence right here. And the time of day that you have sunrise, sunset, you know, the start of the blue hour and, and stuff like that. And also the direction that that light's going to be coming in from. So it is a really cool program and it's free on the computer. Uh, but if you get it on your phone, I have it on my smartphone as well. It costs like $5, but it's definitely worth it to have on your phone as well. And you can just see exactly where the light's going to be coming from, from your location, which is really cool. So let's talk about locations. This is location one, the bridge, the famous bridge. And I can see sunrise light is going to be coming from here. So if I shoot it from this little bridge, I'm going to have the sun rising here, which might work well for the blue hour. So if I get there around seven in the morning, I might get some cool shots from here and then have time to run across and then shoot this after the sun has started to rise a little bit and maybe getting some soft light here while keeping color in this cloud here. 
So this definitely looks like a sunrise place to me. Um, this will be location one, and I'll shoot here and then probably run around over to here as well. So I'll be shooting in these locations. Um, the next place I want to shoot is that plaza, which is up here. And again, you've got sunrise light right behind you. It looks like it might be blocked by this mountain or this hill a little bit from hitting the bridges. So it's probably better at sunset, although the sunset light might be hitting these. Well, no, the sunset light should be perfect. It should be hitting these buildings right here and you should get nice skies over here as well. So this looks like a sunset spot to me. So that's going to be location number two at, to, at sunset on day one. I've also been told from people here in Florence that this is another location that's a little quieter and might also be good. So I'm going to return and shoot two times here, once at sunset and once at sunrise. And this location is cool. Um, an important thing using the photographer's ephemeris is don't put the pan where you're shooting from because that's not important. Put the pan in the place that's going to be in your photo. So it's over here. And so you're shooting from up here and the light will be hitting those locations. So we've got sunrise number one, sunset number one, sunrise number two, and then number three location I want to shoot is from the cathedral, the Duomo, that'll be sunset number two. And again, you can see the sunrise light and the sunset light. If I'm shooting sunset from up top here, I might be shooting straight into the sunset, which could work in my advantage for the type of image I'm wanting. Or I could be shooting opposite that way as well. So it, it probably works, it might not work. It's just something you have to go up and test. And then the, my hostel, the plus hostel is I'm not exactly sure where on the map, but over here somewhere. And so if I shoot this at sunrise, I should get beautiful soft light hitting it from the side and that should work out well. So now I have my plan. I just have to execute it. I've got my five locations on my five mornings and afternoons. And yeah, now we just got to go out and shoot. My first location, as I mentioned, is the waterfront, the riverfront, and the bridge. So I'm going to go do that, and then I'll come back here and report back to tell you how it went. Let's go. So I'm back from this morning shoot at the at the riverfront and at the bridge and I liked it but I'm not mind blown with what I got. I'm not really super stoked about it. When I was shooting straight into the bridge, the bridge was almost too bright and the sky was almost too bright as well. So I, I kind of have a little bit of a fight with shadows and, and highlights in the images and that just is a result of the fact that there was no clouds. It was blue sky and so the sky was just really, really, really blue this morning at dawn. And I think I would have liked to shoot it from the other side, the other um, the other side of the bridge pre-sun 
sunrise when the lights were still on the building. I think that would have came out really cool. Um, but I'm not hurt with what I got. I got some cool images. And yeah, that's how it goes. So um, talking again about planning. The planning doesn't end and the research doesn't end pre first shoot. It doesn't just stop. You don't just arrive at a shoot location, start shooting, and then things don't change. When you get to your first location on your way back to your hostel or your hotel for breakfast, you're wandering with a, you know, a 50 millimeter lens or something like that, shooting street photography, you're shooting the city starting to wake up, and you're kind of hoping for a little bit of luck in some scenes that you didn't expect along the way as well. So you're not just shooting these classic locations, you're also shooting the things in between the classic. And you're also trying to find these unique locations in between that maybe other photographers haven't shot or maybe just aren't famous locations to shoot. So um, you're doing all of that. Then when you get back to your hostel or your hotel and you're having breakfast, you're reviewing your images. You're going through to look at the images to figure out what you could have done better, what you could have done differently and potentially how you can save um, images or if you need to go back to that location. So as I mentioned this morning was okay but not mind-blowing. Uh, I, I might go back. I have a second sunrise available that I'm gonna go up to the plaza, the second plaza as I mentioned earlier, but I might also try to race down and shoot the bridge a second time um, on that same sunrise if I have the time to do that. So when you're shooting a location, it's not just about that location, it's not just about that one time, it's about being spontaneous and it's being flexible in, in your shoot plan and how you can manipulate it to get the absolute most out of your time. So we're on to location number two and tonight's location will be Plaza Michelangelo. We're gonna go up there. I'll probably leave about two hours before sunset and just shoot some street photography along the way as I always do. Um, I know that on my Instagram and on my Facebook and even here on the YouTube channel, I tend to just show, you know, those iconic classic images. But when you're shooting a city, you have to shoot everything if you want to do magazine and newspaper work. You have to photograph absolutely everything. You need to photograph the stuff in between because you can't, a magazine article can't just be 20 photos of cool classic views. You need to get the markets, you need to get the people, you need to get the street life as well. So. Yeah, as I mentioned, we're heading to location number two, the plaza this afternoon. Let's do it. So location number two is done and dusted. I ended up shooting at uh, Michelangelo Plaza there. 
just because it seemed like the best angle and I wanted to make sure I got it. And to make sure I got it, I did not move an inch from the spot I found. It was right at the very edge corner of the plaza and it was by far the best angle, so much so that I had lots of tourists reaching over my shoulder to get their photos and somehow managing to do selfies at my side, <laughs> which was funny, but I got some shots. Considering that the light wasn't spectacular and it poured rain right when the light was getting good. So I got some water spots on a couple of my shots and there was it was tough to shoot a bit in the rain with filters um, on the front of the lens. So it was a bit of a challenge, but I did get some shots and it's absolutely stunning here. Florence is just beautiful. I love it. I'm having such a good time photographing this city. Um, tomorrow morning, I'm going back up. So I'm gonna go back to the same location. I'm gonna find this other plaza first, the one that's supposedly above it, supposedly above it. <laughs> and I'm gonna shoot that first thing in the blue light. And then I'm gonna hike down to the same spot I shot sunset today and, and shoot it at sunrise because by the looks of it this morning, there was really, really nice glow from the morning light on Duomo, on the big cathedral. So I think on that soft morning light kisses the cathedral, it'll look spectacular as I get a little bit strangely poetic. Um, so that's that's the goal for tomorrow morning. We're gonna shoot the, the same location and a slightly different location from above Florence here and, and hopefully get some cool morning light. Hopefully get some separation in the clouds as it was a little bit overcast today. So. We'll go do that in the morning. I'm going to get some sleep, and then after I'm done shooting in the morning, I'll check back in with you guys. Let's go. So this morning didn't go as planned. Um, the plaza I wanted to shoot and the cathedral I wanted to shoot up on the top of the hill were closed in the morning or the gate to get in was closed. Uh, it looked absolutely beautiful though. So I'm a little bit disappointed actually. Um, the light this morning has been so-so. It's kind of been going off and on. It was quite foggy in the morning. And the fact that I couldn't shoot the first location did mean that I did shoot some some different compositions and some different shots than yesterday and some different locations. I kind of have like a Tuscan looking background here um, here at sunrise or just after sunrise and the clouds are kind of cool right now. So it wasn't a wash but I definitely didn't get that glow of sunrise hitting the cathedral, the Duomo Cathedral as I'd hoped. I didn't get the original plaza so things did not go as I planned at all. Um, this afternoon the plan is to go up and shoot the cathedral or from the top of the cathedral just before sunset but because i really want to shoot that plaza and that cathedral on the top of the hill i think i'll go up and shoot duomo or from the top of duomo right before sunset maybe an hour before sunset and then run up the hill and try to get to this plaza on the top of the hill uh, maybe like right before the blue hour starts or right as the blue hour starts. Um, the clouds are starting to fade. It's supposed to be blue skies today. One of the things I would like to do is maybe some extra long exposures in the middle of the day of some of the architecture and flip those to black and white. So if some of the clouds stick around, 
Um, that's something I'll probably do late to midday. So um, I'm gonna go back to the Plus Hostel now and get some breakfast and shoot some street photography on the way home. And then we'll see what happens late afternoon today. Maybe shoot some uh, long exposures, some extra long exposures of the architecture. Definitely go up Duomo and then hopefully get up to that plaza above. So yeah, let's go enjoy the rest of the day. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother. So this afternoon shooting was kind of hit or miss. Um, it was just bright, bright blue skies all day, not a single cloud in the sky, which is fantastic for tourists and not so great for travel photographers. It just makes the light really harsh and it, it, it creates a lot of shadows, especially in a city that has a lot of narrow alleys and tall buildings like Florence does. So you can't really do much. And since there's no clouds, I wasn't able to do any really extreme long exposure um, architecture photography which usually you shoot five to seven minute exposures and you get these like moving clouds that create really cool light so I wasn't able to do that unfortunately the positive though was the top of the cathedral was so cool and I think I got some really cool shots from the top of there and I really enjoyed being up there it was hard work getting up there but uh, I got a couple shots that I'm really happy with from the time up there. They closed the, the cathedral at 4.30. Um, so I got out of there about 4.15 and hiked even higher up in the city to the plaza that I mentioned that I wanted to shoot. Uh, and that was that was hit or miss too. The, the cathedral itself wasn't really that stunning to shoot. And the mausoleum in the background that I thought I was gonna be able to photograph was was off limits to the public so I couldn't get in there that said I got some cool photos of Duomo from the top and the Florence city skyline with part of the cemetery in the foreground that are, are different images to the regular photos you see of Florence so it was cool to find a new angle and and a new perspective of the city um, I'm realizing now that my images of Florence are far too Duomo based I, and it's hard not to be. When you have such an iconic symbol of a city, it's hard not to try to find ways to get that in every single one of your photos. It's like when you're in Paris, you're constantly thinking about how can I get the Eiffel Tower into my shot, but you don't have to. And part of, um, of being a travel photographer is knowing when to include the iconic and when to find your own items and, and own angles and own, you know, cool little spots in the city to photograph. So since I've 
overshot Duomo. I've overshot the cathedral. Tomorrow morning, instead of going um, back to the waterfront or the bridge front, I think I'm going to try to find an alleyway. Something simple. Maybe the arches that are, are just on the backing of one of these alleyways. It's my last morning tomorrow. I have to catch a train at 9 in the morning, so I really probably only have a half an hour to shoot in the morning and then I've got to get back and pack my stuff and get out of town. But as you can see, it's it's a lot of work being a travel photographer. If you only have two or three days in a city, you have to work. The entire time that there's light in the day you're out shooting or scouting or researching or editing photos, or if you're lucky enough, catching a 30 minute nap here or there, Anyways, that's it for just now. I'm exhausted, exhausted, exhausted. And I need to try to get six or seven hours sleep before getting up in the morning. So we'll continue this episode in the morning. So Florence was amazing. I got some, some pretty cool photos there in the city and in just a really short time as you saw, things didn't go as planned as they never do and probably ideally I would have liked another day or two days to shoot the city a little bit better, a little bit more and maybe get a little bit deeper into the city rather than just shooting the iconic images. But I think and I hope that th this episode kind of gives you a little bit of an idea into what goes on in the life of a travel photographer. But what you didn't see in this episode is that I was also planning my next destinations in the midst of all this. So a travel photographer's life isn't just the two hours around sunset and sunrise where they're out shooting. It's the planning that goes into it in the middle of the day. It's the photo editing that takes just as long as shooting the actual photos, if not longer. And it's a lot of stuff. So it's a busy life and it's not just you know, the easiest thing in the world. That being said, it is absolutely amazing and I love it. I love getting to shoot all these places and photograph all these amazing places around the world. I feel privileged to get that opportunity. So don't think that this episode was about me talking about how tough my life is because my life isn't tough. It's very easy and very enjoyable and I love every minute of it. So as I mentioned, that's it for my episode of Florence. You've seen photos from Florence. You can head over to my website, brendansadventures.com and search out the article on Florence to see the high resolution um, photos of this trip. Now, I also want to mention that this article and or this video was a viewer idea. So I thought it was a great idea. I thought it would do it. If there's a video that you want to see, if there's uh, you know some question that you have that you want fulfilled, in the form of a video, let me know. I love hearing what you guys want to see. I love hearing from you guys. So, so shoot me a, a message in the comments or shoot me an email or, or send me a message on my contact form on my website or whatever. I'd love to hear from you guys. So, so let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know what kind of episodes you want to see or what things you want to learn or what insights into the life of a travel photographer you guys want. Um, as I mentioned 13 times now, that's it for the show in Florence. My next destination is, is Cinque Terre which should be amazing. I've seen amazing photos from there, so it should be cool. And I hope you guys stick around for that episode. 
for that episode and the ones beyond it. So I'll catch you later. Peace.